नमस्कार महाराष्ट्र वृक्ष संवर्धिनी तर्फे मी डॉक्टर माणिक फाटक आपल्या सर्व निसर्गप्रेमी श्रोत्यांचे स्वागत करते आजचं हे आपलं लेक्चर खास आहे मासिक प्रबोधन म्हणजे मंथली लेक्चर आणि डॉक्टर वामन दत्तात्रयवर्त म्हणजे वनस्पती शास्त्रज्ञ वादवर्त यांचा स्मृती दिन आहे गुरुवर्य वर्तक सर हे आघारकर रिसर्च इन्स्टिट्यूट मधून रिटायर्ड झाले आणि सतरा एप्रिल दोन हजार एक म्हणजे त्या दिवशी त्यांचं निधन झालं तेव्हापासून आपण त्यांचा स्मृती स्मृती दिन लेक्चर स्वरूपात आणि काही वेगवेगळे कार्यक्रम रोप वाटप करून किंवा वृक्ष परिचय करून कुठे वेगवेगळ्या ठिकाणी मेडिसिनल गार्डन्सना आणि ह्याला भेटी देऊन असा अशा तऱ्हेने आपण साजरा करतो आज आपण सरांच्या स्मृतीला विनम्रपणे वंदन करूया आणि आजचा आजच्या कार्यक्रमाला जे वक्ते लाभलेले आहेत डॉक्टर राजेंद्र शिंदे हे सुद्धा वनस्पती शास्त्रज्ञ आहेत आणि ते झेवियर कॉलेजचे प्रिन्सिपल आहेत शिवाय मुख्य म्हणजे ते ब्लॅटर हार्बेरियम जे आहे त्याचे ते डायरेक्टर देखील आहेत त्यामुळे सरांचं ह्या मंचावरती खूप खूप स्वागत दोन हजार सतरा पासून महाराष्ट्र वृक्ष संवर्धिनी ही वेगवेगळ्या विषयांवरती व्याख्यानं आयोजित करते त्यामध्ये आतापर्यंत आपण देवराई पाणी माती नागरी हिरवाई गड किल्ल्यांवरील वनस्पती गवताळ प्रदेश अशा वेगवेगळे विषय घेऊन व्याख्यानं आयोजित केली होती तसंच या वर्षीचा विषय आहे इन्वेझिव त्याला आपण उपद्रवी म्हणूया किंवा आगंतुक म्हणूया इन्वेझिव्ह प्लांट्स इन्वेझिव्ह स्पीसी ह्याबद्दल महाराष्ट्र वृक्ष संवर्धिनी ही संस्था देखील डॉक्टर वादवर्तक सरांनी स्थापन केली आहे तेहतीस वर्षापूर्वी म्हणजे नाईन्टीन एटी नाईन मध्ये समविचारी लोकांना एकत्र घेऊन सरांनी ही संस्था स्थापन केली आणि तेव्हापासून आज तागायत निस निसर्ग पर्यावरण ह्या सर्व विषयांमध्ये आमची संस्था काम करते आणि उद्देश तोच आहे की वृक्ष परिचय सामान्य माणसांना आपल्या भोवताली ज्या काही वनस्पती आहेत त्याची व्यवस्थित माहिती व्हावी यासाठी तर असे वेगवेगळे कार्यक्रम आमचे देखील प्रोजेक्ट देखील चालू असतात देवराईवरचा प्रोजेक्ट असू दे किंवा कुठलं वृक्ष लागवड असू दे वृक्ष परिचय असू दे तर पूर्णपणे निसर्ग साक्षरता आणि पर्यावरण ह्या विषयावरती आमची संस्था काम करते आपल्या कार्यक्रमाचं स्वरूप असं राहील की मी डॉक्टर उपाध्याय अनुराधा उपाध्याय आहेत त्यांना विनंती करीन की त्यांनी वादवर्तक सरांची थोडी ओळख करून द्या सरांबद्दल त्यांच्या स्मृती सांगाव्या त्यांची ओळख करून द्यावी नंतर डॉक्टर अजित वर्तक हे शिंदे सरांची परिचय करून देतील आणि मग शिंदे सरांचं लेक्चर होईल तर मी उपाध्याय मॅडमना विनंती करते की त्यांनी सरांची सरांबद्दल माहिती सांगावी धन्यवाद थँक्यू माणिक गुरुर ब्रह्मा गुरुर विष्णू गुरुर देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परब्रह्म तस्मय श्री गुरुवे नमा माझे गुरु डॉक्टर वादवर्तक यांच्याबद्दल मी जस्ट आय एम टॉकिंग अबाउट आय एम जस्ट ब्रिफिंग आउट अबाउट डॉक्टर वामन दत्तात्रय वर्तक ही वॉज वॉर्न ऑन नोव्हेंबर नाईन्टीन नाईन्टीन ट्वेंटी फायव्ह अँड ही डिपार्ट फ्रॉम अर्स ऑन एप्रिल सेव्हन्टीन टू थाउजंड वन ॲट द एज ऑफ सेव्हन्टी सिक्स डॉक्टर वर्तक contribution to the plant floristics and taxonomy is immense but his research on sacred groves ethnobotany made him uh, a different uh, impression he born in a small taluka place at bor near pune which is surrounded by beautiful nature and forts like torna 
Raideshwar, Purandar, etc. He, he completed his graduation from FC College and while graduating from Ferguson College, he joined the National Cadet Corpus, that is NCC, and there he did a great job at the rank of major. This could certainly be seen in his discipline life. His way of delivering lectures was quite unique. Any topic was never felt bo bored with his clear language, good, appropriate, self-explanatory photographs and slides. A easy way of conveying his thoughts on the plants and environment. Observing the audience in front uh, of him, while he, he may be the school children or the ex, uh, subject experts, he spontaneously spoke, he used to spoke at different levels on the same photographs or slides. Students get enlightened and enjoy listening his lectures and so also discussions and his guidance. Under the guidance of Guru, Dr. S. P. Agharkar, sir, and then after Dr. G. P. Devdikar, sir, he started his research in Maharashtra Association for Cultivation of Science, that is today's Agarkar Research Institute, Pune. He benefited from association at that time and their cooperation from the stalwarts like Dr. B. A. Razi, Professor Kolachka, Professor Haribau Paranspe, Father Santapao, and so on. His research observations and scientific documents on floristics and rare endangered endemic plant species in and around hilly regions of Pune, Maharashtra are still the guidelines for the botanist today. Family cypressy was his PhD topic. Then after, on few families, he done a great research. The families which are really neglected more, like Podostamacy, Leguminosis, Cisalpinacy. He surveyed and documented species of use and utility value like wild edible plant, medicinal plants from Kulaba province, that is today's Raigad region, wild resources, of, resources used by aborigines. So documentation of use value species and further prospects of such resources were get well documented. Goa is a na na nature rich stage. Even, do, uh, even though there was no such facilities at that time, which are available today for us, Sir made a comprehensive study documenting the plant species there. Sir's book on flora of Gomin, Gomantak is his testimony that was published in 1966. Even today, this book is a guide for all the researchers. To do such research, preservation of specimens is necessary along with the clean observations. Proper collection of species and preservation of specimens needs to follow special scientific methods. His booklet in Marathi was published by Marathi Vidyan Parishad titled Vanaspati Sankalan. Today also, this is the only document available in Marathi for the preservation techniques on plant species. In the AHMA, that is Herbarium at Agarkar Research Institute, the oldest specimen is Dr. Vartak's specimen he has collected in 1955. His personal collection of such specimen was also very large and huge. After his death, part of his personal collection transferred to Shivaji University, Kolhapur, and the seed collection get transferred to Dapoli. Along with plants, he also collected rare postal stamps and coins. His son, Dr. Ajit Kaving, forward this aesthetic legacy. The conservation of forest is being achieved by aborigines based on religious ground and faith. In Maharashtra, such forest patches are known as Devrai, Devrahat or Devban. These sacred forests represent ancient vegetation from the respective habitats. Sir was pioneer researcher in this area from the state of Maharashtra. Credit goes to him for drawing attention of researchers to this aspect, which has owned the social, cultural, important economical value. Uh, Vartak sir recorded about 250 to 300 such devrais from Pune and surrounding areas.
he was greatly attracted by the plants of coconut from the coconut class after his retirement he published a book katha tada mada cha in marathi activities like identifying trees regular field visits conservation activities guiding researchers and botanists they were close to his heart and he occupied this for such active uh, activities for over four decades apart from these books more than 200 research papers are on his credit sir has also written extensively in marathi in for the general masses later he with the help of environmentalist he founded the maharashtra vriksh samvardhini which hosts the memorial lecture this year also every year after his death sir guided many students for the msc and phd on various aspects of the botany i am one truly fortunate to be guided by my guru dr v d vartak he specifically sir was available for the guidance to all anyone can meet sir at any time even common man would just walk in with the general curiosity and the sir used to talk freely with everyone right from the school child to the academicians in the recognition of his contribution he was awarded special uh, medal j w hershberger gold medal of from uh, in ethnobotany in 1999 he was also honored by vrukshratna and vrukshamitra four plants have name after uh, in his honor paramitra vartaki azadiracta indica subspecies vartaki brachistelma vartaki and siropegia vartaki so this is my guru dr vaman dattatre vartak uh mi sarancha smruti la vinamra abhivadan karte and i request dr arjit to introduce the 23rd vaman dattatre vartak smruti lecture dr rajendra shinde sir uh, good evening everyone it is a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today dr rajendra shinde good evening everyone it is a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today <coughs> dr rajendra shinde dr shinde did his post graduation and doctorate in botany from university of mumbai after working as a senior lecturer at university of guyana in 2006 he joined department of botany at saint xavier's college mumbai since 2018 he is serving as the principal of saint xavier's college he holds the concurrent positions of head of the department of botany and director of the blatter herbarium his research interests are plant taxonomy biodiversity biodiversity assessment phylogenetic analysis he has published two books and more than 70 referred research articles in national and international journals he has discovered three new species of grasses he has received many awards for his work and uh, service some of them are best principal award by the university of mumbai most innovative principal award the best teacher award his hobbies are playing chess trekking and wildlife photography with this short introduction now i request uh, dr shinde to deliver his talk thank you sir can is my screen visible yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. so thank you uh, professor vartak for this introduction and i would like to just begin with appreciation and thanks to maharashtra vriksh samvardhini uh, its office bearers the dr anuradha upadhyay who actually is instrumental pulling me in for this lecture uh dr manik uh, mission devrai project and professor vartak himself so thank you for this opportunity uh last few years having engaged with zavier's uh, administration i have i have been i got drifted away you know from botany 
So I think last two, three months, this is my second lecture and it's high time I get back to my roots. Uh, today's topic, we are talking about invasive species. I just remember my own personal uh, incidents. I studied, uh, my schooling was in a place called Punitamba near Amandnagar, Kopargao. And we had a huge ground, almost two football uh, grounds would fit into that. And during winter, uh, in those days, Saturday used to be the outdoor uh, work experience period, Karya Nubhava. And the whole school used to be on the ground, uprooting Parthenium, Congress grass. And every Saturday during winter, this would be ritual. The ground was too huge to keep doing every Saturday for next two, three months. But every Monday or Tuesday, there would be somebody coming to school complaining about some allergy from this. So this was my first interaction with invasive species. Right? That time I didn't know that this is invasive species. I would hear from someone in school ki hey, uh, Congress grass, kasa American gawa manna ala, various theories. That was one of the theories. So with that, let us, uh, I would again, just slight deviation, pay my tribute to Professor Dr. Vaman uh, Vartak, Vaman Dattatre Vartak. Again, my interaction with Vartak sir was very minimal. I had met him uh, when I had accompanied Dr. and Mr. and Mrs. Almeda to the Agarkar Research Institute for reference work. I think Mrs. Almeda was doing her PhD. And that time she was all the time this was a kind of a Bible for her enumeration of plants from Gomandak because she was working on Savantwadi area. And she, was, she would use this as a reference book. So I had met him in the MSCS herbarium at that time. And then second meeting with him was, I think he had, if I'm not mistaken, he had come for uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Manik Mistri, his PhD viva. I had met him at that time. So I would pay my tribute on behalf of Blatter Herbarium and the community at St. Xavier's College. We pay our tribute to this great scientist and teacher. Uh, let's begin with this uh, topic today. And we have this, the biodiversity, we, we are known, India is, current, is known as uh, one of the, you know, huge uh, diversity in plants. We, if you look at the world uh, statistics, we have these flowering plants and algae and fungi that contributing to the large number. Mostly flowering plants, fungi, algae, bryophytes. And uh, <clears throat> they have been contributing to our ecosystems variously. So we have this biodiversity ecosystems, which is, uh, uh, you know, at times we have, we have been getting food, water, various resources, oil, etc. So we have uh, natural resources coming from ecosystems. We have uh, regulatory services, for example, uh, you know, the climate change depends on the system, ecosystem, the food flood regulations, uh, natural uh, hazard regulations, pollinations, and so many other regulatory benefits from uh, ecosystem around us. We also have a cultural services benefit from ecosystem. Uh, when Dr. Upadhyay introduced uh, or was talking about uh, Vartak sir, she mentioned about Devrai. And uh, if you have visited Devrai, it is a kind of a spiritual uh, link there. And we have such several spiritual enrichment uh, through the biodiversity or through the plants. We also have an intellectual development. 
recreational and aesthetic values coming up from this uh, biodiversity or ecosystem services. And then, of course, the main uh, the entire photosynthesis, the food we get, the water cycle, nutrient cycle, all these are supporting services uh, from the plants. Then if you look at this uh, current global extinction risk, sorry, this is, yeah. I would just, uh, you know, point out uh, your attention to the lower picture and you will see the lots of plants, dicots, amphibians, cycads. These are the ones uh, are, you know, getting, this is an extinction risk. This is a group which is getting extinct. Besides, if you look at the fishes, they're not much, I mean, the extinction is not that rampant. But dicots or other plants, there's an extinction happening at a great speed. Now, why the extinction happens? There are several reasons. And we will come to one of the reasons is today's topic. So we'll come to that a little later. And therefore, this particular chart. So with this kind of biodiversity, as we've seen that extinction is happening, plants are getting destroyed because of various reasons. You know, there's a habitat loss due to many developmental projects, basically, or natural calamities. Uh, degradation, destruction of forests. There's a loss because of uh, over-exploitation uh, of fish fishing, hunting, farming, over-exploitation of grasslands, ocean acidification where large amount of carbon dioxide in the ocean and that is getting... Uh, The, the there's a loss of biodiversity there's about say for example we we have seen this about 45 percent drop in biodiversity because of these various reasons in india by 2030 the water demand will increase uh, will be twice as uh, of the availability uh, at present, 14 to 20 rivers basins are already stressed because of the water scarcity. The land use is change. It is changing. 45% uh, of the land use uh, change is happening. So various these kinds of uh, activities, over exploitations, etc. Et Pollution is another major uh, cause for biodiversity loss. Uh, we have been India has been declared as the third most polluted country in the year 2023 after Bangladesh and Pakistan heading the list. According to the report released by a Swiss air quality monitoring body, uh, <clears throat> the climate change is, is an issue which everyone talks about and everyone is experiencing it. Uh, the reasons for climate change are many and uh, it could be, one can say that invasive species could be the one reason for these kind of uh, degradation of biodiversity. These biological invasions, you know, when we're talking about uh, invasive species, these, what is invasion? What is What are the biological invasions? I simply, I know I, I remember writing few articles as a guest trees of Mumbai. Now, as long as they are limited and benefiting to the mankind, we don't mind calling them guests. But moment uh, they start eating up our resources, moment they start creating problems, then it becomes invasion. So the biological invasion is a term used to describe the process involving the intentional or unintentional transport or the movement of species outside its natural uh, range by human activities and its introduction of into new region. 
uh, and where once they are uh, introduced there, they are established. Especially the the areas where the ports, where the grains are uh, brought in or uh, the food is brought in at port port area, uh, say JNPT or airports where the material is brought in. This could be one uh, biological invasions. Uh, <clears throat> there is a term, a team of uh, international scientists had found that invasive alien species have cost the Indian economy between at least 8.3 trillion to 11.9 trillion. Dollars, US dollars, we are talking about during 1960 to 2020. So much of financial loss because of these uh, non wanting or not wanted guest or invasive species. This was published in the Springer Journal in 2020. So, what are these alien species? There are some. Uh, so alien species whose presence in a region is attributed to uh, human that have enabled to overcome the barriers defined the natural range. Once these species are introduced, maybe accident, maybe some transportation, some mechanism which is unintentional. They start spreading, they establish themselves. So the established alien species, which is a subset of alien species that have produced a viable self-sustaining population and may have spread uh, in at various uh, places, spread in various regions. Invasive species then established uh, these invasive species then have a negative effect on our ecosystem, on our, the biodiversity, local areas. What uh, is that effect? We will see that. Many such species also have impact on nature's contribution to people, right? Uh, in different concepts such as ecosystem goods, ecosystem services, which we saw in the first slide, and uh, these invasive species are then causing a damage to such ecosystem services. There are more than 37,000 alien species established worldwide and around 200 new alien species are recorded every year. So the rate of these species, the migration of these species from their native region to new region, new uh, non-native region, is quite high. More than 3,500 invasive alien species recorded globally, including 1,061 plants, 6% 6 of alien plant species, some invertebrates, vertebrates, etc. So the rate is extremely high and they spread very, very fast. If you look at the first 10 uh, top ranking or the number wise out of 10 there are seven species are plant species the other three are mammals and uh, from the mammal group but the in the plant species if you look at it it is water hyacinth i think water hyacinth everyone knows and everyone knows how it spreads rivers and rivers and lakes and lakes are filled with water hyacinth lantana lantana is another plant which is spreaded across the our country that is almost at 60, 69 regions this has been recorded. Then black rats have been recorded at 60 locations, 60 places. Subabul or Lucena leucocephala. Of course, this is now not just invasive, but it is get, getting being cultivated and planted. But that's also another species. So we have such species here like uh, uh, Castor, Ricinus communis, uh, Ailanthus altissima, uh, Robinia, Pseudocacia, the black locust, 
and uh, chromolina. So these are just top 10 species. That doesn't mean that others are not there. Others are also equally bad. And there are many such uh, species uh, around. So <clears throat> if you look at the Indian scenario or the species, invasive species here in India, around 185 to 200 plus species are recorded, invasive species from India. Bhutan records 53. Now these numbers are just, you know, uh, for a reference sake, I'm sure these numbers are not very accurate and they could be plus or minus. But just to get the idea how it is spreaded across, the <clears throat> highest number of invasive plants in South Asia are from Southern, where are they coming from? These plants who are, uh, which are established in India are mostly, majority of them are from South America. Some of them are North American species and few are from Africa and Europe. These are some escape uh, pathways, these Lantana species, uh, Eupatorium, Icornia, Parthenium, these, these contribute to almost 40% of Indian uh, invasive species. Some of them have come as stowaways, such as in the ballast water ships, you know, the lot of transportation happened that time and happens now also. And uh, people bring a lot of material to balance the ship, etc. So some seeds are coming from uh, such uh, transportation methods or escape pathways. These are just few predominant or dominant species in Indian scenario, which is covered all the uh, dry areas, uh, barren lands, polluted areas and polluted rivers. So we have seen, I'm sure everyone has seen these Icornia crustaceous, which I, I, my MSc research area was Nandurman Meshwar uh, Wetland Wildlife Sanctuary. And if you have seen the Nandurman Meshwar Dam, it used to be full with this, completely filled with Icornia. Many such ponds, I, I am seeing the Bandra Lake at SV Road. Once upon a time, this used to be an annual ritual to clear the uh, this Icornia from this uh, pond. Same way, we have these Mikania, uh, Micrantha or Lantana. Lantana is, is such a popular uh, invasive species. During childhood, I think everyone has eaten those sweet blackberry-like fruits. Everyone has eaten them. Everyone has seen them. And you see a lot of birds sitting on that. So Lantana has has been a predominant uh, uh, species. Then we have a um, Chromolina uh, Eupatorium Parthenium uh, Hyptis or what is known as now Mesosperum uh, Swavillons Ageratum conizavides. These are some predominant uh, invasive fast growing species uh, around us in Maharashtra, in India, or our region across. Why do they spread so fast and what is the characteristics they possess? These are generally very fast growing species. Uh, water hyacinth populations are known to double, uh, double in as little as in 12 days. Uh, their life cycles are short life cycles. So Parthenium, uh, Alternanthra, Water Hyacinth, Eupatorium are annuals and set hundreds of seeds every year because of their short uh, life cycle. They also have a heavy uh, rate of reproduction. Water Hyacinth, Alternanthra reproduces both vegetatively as well as sexually. Uh, mature Eupatorium 
can produce up to 30,000 seeds in a year, one plant. So you can imagine uh, the whole area which is having uh, eupatorium, how many seeds it will be producing. Also, they got a better dispersal. Uh, as I mentioned that lantana seeds, the berries are very sweet and eaten by children. They are also eaten by a lot of birds. So, you will see the lantana seed dispersal uh, through birds, predominantly through birds. Parthenium and eupatorium seeds are also dispersed by winds. So, better dispersal. Uh, then germinate very fast. So, there is a germination percentage reaching very high uh, germination percentage, fast growing. Uh, phenotypic plasticity is the ability of plants to produce different phenotypes under different environmental conditions, which is one of the ways in which organisms adapt to the environmental changes. And these plants show a very great uh, phenotypic plasticity. They have a capability to adapt to a new physical conditions. Uh, Parthenium, Chromolina or, or Eupatorium grows on a wide range of soils. They adapt to different kinds of soils and range of vegetation uh, types. Uh, allelopithic properties, many of them uh, display this property and do not allow, they produce chemicals which do not allow anything else to grow there. So production of chemicals to prevent germinations of other species in the soil. And because of these, their uh, traits, these characteristics, these species uh, spread very fast. So let's look at the first one or a couple of them. I would just talk about these five, six species uh, in little detail. And uh, we have our Icornia species. Icornia, uh, those who are non-botanists often get cheated. You, know, you will find them, these flowers being sold on the road with, in a potted plant. By the time you bring it home, it will last for about 24 hours and then uh, the plant would get withered away. So Icornia is a free-floating aquatic species from Ponted Area Sea. Originally, again, from South America, right? One of the worst aquatic weeds in the world. All the lakes, rivers, it is invaded. Distributed in Asia, Africa, Australia, Europe, North America. <clears throat> the first in South America, the presence was reported in 1902 from Brazil and from Argentina in 1942. In India, the plant was first introduced from Brazil as an ornamental plant in the year 1896. There's a report by Rao in 1988. The picture shows, you know, the picture speaks thousand words here. You can see the, the elephants, half the elephant, either they're sitting, even if they're sitting, you can see the quantity and the, the size of the, the spread happened here. So, Icornia. How do we, what are the impacts and how do you manage these uh, icornias? These, uh, <clears throat> these plant spreads rapidly and replaces other aquatic vegetation. They don't allow anything else to grow, reducing the water bodies, their size, affecting fish and other freshwater aquatic species. They also challenge, uh, create challenges for navigation such as rivers, in if there is a, a river is being used largely in West Bengal, etc. Uh, hydroelectric power generation and tourism. These water bodies are choked with water hyacinth. Also, they become breeding ground for mosquitoes and pose health uh, risks. Physical or mechanical methods have been found to be effective in controlling the spread of the plant. The nutrition runoff uh, into infestations should be uh, is minimized because of this. The nutrient inflow can be reduced by pre uh, or prevented by treating water before discharging 
into the waterways. And I think you can see there's a picture of pollution happening in the water. And that is one reason why this particular species spreads. If you look at the second species, Lantana uh, species, Lantana camara, uh, erect, low erect or a subscandent shrub from the Barbinaceae family, invaded around 69 countries and poses a serious threat to the natural uh, biodiversity. Uh, initially, it was brought to India in 1807 as an ornamental plant at the National Botanical Garden and uh, as an ornamental hedge plant in Calcutta in early 19th century and it spread it from there. Now, if you go through, I've, I've seen this uh, huge thickets of uh, lantana in um, tiger reserved areas where these tigers use this plant as their hideouts. Uh, <clears throat> so the plant has spread across it, it it has not stopped uh, just in the forested areas or the barren lands. It is You will see them along the roadside, railway tracks and various other uh, areas. Right? It has invaded 86,806 square kilometer forest in uh, India, particularly degraded forest of hot and humid region. Uh, <clears throat> widely distributed across the landscape, with maximum invasion in fragmented dry deciduous in central India, Shivalik Hills, and southern western Ghats. Mostly, if you see their invasion, savannas had highest suitability of invasion, 87%, followed by most moist grasslands, which are almost 72% uh, of this species, the lantana has invaded. There is a study uh, conducted by uh, well-known uh, tiger specialist, Dr. Yadavendra Jhala. And he has found the potential invasion species in central India, uh, where the tiger reserved forests are there. Uh, this particular species is there in Bandhavgarh, this particular species in Ranthambore, you will find huge thickets where the, the animal like tiger can be completely hidden and so it is being used by these wildlife for their hideouts. The current cost, the current expenses uh, for lantana management is 5.5 billion dollars, American dollars in India. So huge financial losses because of this. Uh, you you can see that they have come. If you look at this uh, the map here, the original was South America's and uh, based South America basically, and now has spreaded India as well as Australia, etc. Uh, the third major uh, species is Alternentra, again aquatic uh, species from South America. Uh, it is Stoliniferous herb uh, found in many parts of the world, infesting rivers, lakes, ponds, canals, and as well as even the terrestrial habitat. There is a report in Calcutta Herbarium that this first specimen from Victoria Lake in Rangoon district collected uh, from Burma in 1932 so after that, this is spread it. Now, how did it come in? It was mainly uh, transportation during World War uh, II. Mainly seeds, uh, this plant reached to India with packaging material during when the uh, food material was brought in uh, during World War II, as well as other material brought in during the World War II. First time, it was found in India near the airport. So as I mentioned, these species generally, the entry point of these species is either airports or the, the seaports or the rivers where a lot of transportation of grains or food material happens. 
this is impacted uh, <clears throat> this particular uh, species of uh, aquatic species and uh, interferes this is interfered with water flow affecting irrigations uh, obstructing navigations making fishing difficult also the fish stock you know, the livelihood the fish fisher folks uh, which has affected their lives uh, the plant also forms a dense mat as you see the picture on the right side forming a dense mat cutting the light uh, to the surface of the water competing with other aquatic plants and blocking the sunlight and gaseous exchange affecting habitat for aquatic animals these mats uh, on the water surface provide a lot of breeding grounds for mosquitoes and thus uh, harmful to the human beings right the mechanical control is followed but it's expensive most of these species there is no other way uh, the cheaper way is the manual uh, since we have a good human resources available the labor uh, human labor is available removing them manually seems to be the cheapest and the best way because if you use the chemicals to kill them then it might harm the other local species of that particular area this is lately i think uh, in last 20 20 years this has been seen in india at many places uh, <clears throat> micania micrantha or bitter vine aspracee family and uh, has introduced to india again after the second world war it was not that uh, spread it but recent it is spreading like uh, vast spreading happening right now native from central and south america and uh, grows best where fertility organic matter oil soil moisture are uh, suitable for the growth and it will it it will grow there cutting killing other plants cutting by, by cutting their lights or smothering even the location this the the area gets uh, denuded because the these plants are occupying uh, the area of the native species if you look at the picture of the uh, the world map here you will get the idea how much area has been occupied by this particular species uh <clears throat> i think the picture speaks a lot and you can see the entire rhino uh, is getting completely hidden there because of this particular plant many tea estates in india are affected uh, by this particular species even the rubber estates in sri lanka and malaysia so it has spread it across these areas uh in kaziranga this picture is from kaziranga showing this micania uh, growth now manual removal of the plant has been the most effective method as i said right the cromolina odorata uh again a very fast growing perennial shrub uh was introduced in uh, in south uh, in asia uh during 19 uh, 1800 and uh introduced as an ornamental plant so it has been brought as an ornamental plant but overtaken the it it became soon invasive species invaded the land the plant has a capability one single plant can produce 30000 approximately 30000 seeds from a single plant so if fully grown thicket or a forested area of this particular species you can imagine the number of seeds being produced in one season and spreading those seeds all over right and their wind dispersal uh, method the plant is a astrace member has a pap papus so dispersed by wind easily dispersed by wind can also be dispersed by animal and human beings again a very dense stands in forest clearings and competes with native species so there's another 
uh, effect of these invasive species that they compete with the native species and soon the native species disappears from that area because there is no space available. Uh, this also increases the fire risk in the forested area because once they dry and uh, they also have a large content, astracy, members, verbenes, volatile oils, etc. So there is a lot of a fire uh, hazardous hazard uh, from this area. It reduces yield uh, of crop plants such as rice, wheat, uh, and also invades pastures, grazing areas where the livestock can be uh, grazed. And it could be toxic for the livestock. Again, the mechanical removal, uh, costly and ineffective, but no other way uh, than just remove them uh, before they start spreading. Uh, chemical control for this particular plant is effective but harms the other natural species in that area. What are these factors which are responsible for spread of these invasive species? We have seen how these, uh, how much land is occupied and how much um, the, the money or how much economy is uh, affected, affected by these species. So how do they grow? And the main reason for the growth of these invasive species is anthropogenic disturbances, interruption in ecological areas uh, due to human induced development activities like rail, road, constructions, etc. Uh, I just came back from Hyderabad and I visited Hyderabad almost after 15 years and I visited yesterday high tech city and the city that area was i just couldn't recognize initially the whole area was a rocky area and now what we have there is building so such kind of anthropogenic disturbances in natural habitats bring in the species the, the people who come for constructions bring food with them and with the food and other material supply material these seeds come in there Thereby, change in the land use, the, the land use changes such as, say, deforestation, forest degradation, and increase in croplands or forest fires. So, the, this is another reason why uh, these species are uh, brought in or they spread. Transportation. Um, Dr. Manik Misri sent me some reference of Ratnagiri uh, area and he had given a list of all the weeds and the reason why those weeds have spreaded in Ratnagiri area or locations where all the entry points, wherever there is an entry point where the ships are coming in, the ports are there, where these, uh, these species are getting spread. So transportation is another uh, uh, reason for this. Uh, livestock grazing, animals uh, are allowed to graze and they carry seeds uh, along with them on either on the body or through their uh, elementary canal, uh, through digestive canals, etc. And the seeds are spread from one place to transported from one place to the other space. Place. Climate change induced agro uh, climate conditions. Uh, crop patterns, introduction of new crops, introduction of fertilizers, post-harvested croplands can also attract invasive species. And of course, the pollution, environment, mental pollution, alter ecosystem composition uh, and functioning. This can reduce the competitiveness of native species while uh, creating favorable conditions for establishing these uh, invasive species. What are the impacts? So, the native species generally, there are 24% uh, invasive species are competing with the native species. And as a result, native species start disappearing or reduce in their population. Habitat quality is changed. So the ecosystem, the habitat is changed, 27% change in that. There's a parasitic 
invasive plants like uh, cascuta or uh, you find them growing uh, these species orobanke or cascuta this is also a wildlife movement is uh, uh, disturbed or is tampered with um, because of these species these uh, incremental degraded and natural habitats are feeding grounds for the movements of wild habitat uh, wild animals and once these habitats are overtaken by invasive species then the wild life movement gets affected uh, ecological sensitive areas uh, where a lot of herbivores and predators uh, are dependent on these areas are then at risk because of the invasive species because they are affecting uh, that area thereby local species damaging soil quality and impacting the groundwater uh, increase in food rest increase the food chain disturbances transmission of diseases these are some of those uh, impacts of uh, invasive species there is some statistics given here 34% proportion of impacts reported in america and you you can see the percentage there 14% proportion of impacts reported in freshwater ecosystem 60% is recorded in global extinctions to which invasive alien species have contributed 1215 species uh the local extinction of native species caused by mere 218 species so you can imagine five six times more 2000 218 invasive species have uh, made 1215 species extinct so such kind of damages such kind of uh, uh impact uh, uh you know dangerous impacts on this uh ecosystem diversity or ecosystem uh, services there is a four time rise in economic cost of biological uh invasions in every decade so if you have to remove them then the cost has been increasing the financial losses happening there what measures can we uh bring in so the prevention is the i suppose the prevention is the best method rather than then spend money in removing these kind of uh, plants however once they are established uh there is no way but remove them either mechanically uh, with the help of human beings or chemically uh using uh, chemical pesticides etc which are dangerous so prevention is particularly import important in on islands where you know the islands are uh, if the island gets uh, invaded by invasive species then the some marine uh, species are going to get affected sustained and adequate funding is required from government constant awareness programs to be conducted we need to have a capacity building for removal of such uh, species um, <clears throat> there should be sufficient financial resources should be an effective system for tracking and monitoring uh, these uh, uh, plants their spreads and impacts etc the policies and guidelines should be in place to prevent new invasions from multiple pathways uh, an effective early detection system should be in place uh, effective rapid response system has to be in place with uh, contingency plans and identify species roles and responsibilities quarantine system uh, i think not many people are aware of this i mean we we know quarantine means at the airport there is a quarantine department but our country has a, a excellent quarantine system many of us have seen the the quarantine research quarantine institute at wadala uh, if you have visited that you will realize how much government cares for these kind of things and what methods they use uh, to stop these kind of invasions so quarantine and inspection facilities and i think in entire uh, 
western region mumbai is the only center so we need to have more such quarantine centers at each and every entry point from where where the material is coming in or material is going out not only we should stop invasive species coming in but we should also stop them spreading to some other part of the world uh, <clears throat> there was a um, our government has adopted this cuming um, this global bio biodiversity framework and we have signed this mou which to eliminate minimize reduce and mitigate the impact of invasive alien species on biodiversity and ecosystem services by identifying managing the pathways of the introduction of alien species preventing the introduction and establishment of priority invasive alien species reducing the rates of their introduction uh, and establishing other known or potential invasive alien species by at least 50% in 2030 eradicating and controlling these invasive alien species especially in priority sites like islands so this is a uh, step taken by the government Uh, and government is serious about controlling these uh, invasive species area now many of them these species are established and uh, people try and remove them but people also have worked on these species to find out whether we can use these species rather than just keep cribbing about it so these are some usage where this is being used the icornia is used for removal of nutrients and heavy metals from sewage and so used as a bioremedial material in china the weed was uh, widely uh, used as animal food that is same as this icornia was used as animal food in 1950 to 1970s a lot of people are using it as a fertilizer now the lantana also provide shelter and vital winter food for many native birds as i mentioned it is used as a hideout by uh, the wild animals number of endangered birds and animal species utilize lantana as their food as well as hiding uh, habitat uh, chromolina odorata is also ornamental plant that is sometimes encouraged to use in shifting slash and burn agriculture uh, to compete with imperata cylindrica or cogon grass which is harder to control micania micrantha uh, leaves are commonly used as traditional medicines for uh, analgesia skin bleeding healing sores antimicrobial skin infection and so on alternantra is also used as a leafy vegetable and as traditional medicines for various human elements particularly uh, different viral infections like influenza and measles so not that i mean one way of uh, dealing with these uh, species could be uh, removing them and then allowing native species to uh, grow again there uh, or the other way could be if you cannot remove them or if you cannot get if you cannot eradicate them completely then might as well look at the their uses or bring them in use for the human being and if you can scientifically and technologically uh, bring them again in usage for the human being then i think uh, there is a way to deal with these uh, invasive species i think that was my last slide and uh, i can end with this thank you so much if you have any questions i would be happy to answer thank you so much sir very informative uh, lecture uh malar there are there are few questions in the chat box yeah uh, upadhyay madam you can read that uh, please yes uh, dr dopatkar dr dopatkar <laughs> is a good friend of mine and we miss him at nerul Yes. Yes. Yes, Dr. Dupta. Thank you, sir. Uh, it was very informative. Uh, my question is related to Giri Pushpa. 
I do not know what its actual botanical name is in Latin. Giri Pushpa, it, it is widely used as a live fence and it can be propagated vegetatively. It is a legume. It is a, I believe it's a legume, so it fixes nitrogen in soil. But I find it to be invasive. Now, how would you classify that and what can we do for controlling it? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Gliricidia. 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 Mar yes. Yeah. So, I, now again, you know, uh, unless and until it really, really damages the system, uh, I think Giri Pushpa or this Gliricidia spreaded because of the social forestry. It was one of the fast growing trees, and uh, during social forestry program, the forest department wanted to show. Uh, others that you know look how fast they are planting the trees uh, now there are various stories attached with Giri Pushpa uh, you, you ask me how do you control it I don't think there is any method to control that uh, trees as such but that it is very useful as a nitrogen fixing plant uh, tree and uh, it is also known as Undir Mar, right? So I suppose I'm not very sure about that, but uh, yeah, Mohit sir, you have answer for this? No, no, sir. I have another question. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Yeah, if anyone knows exact uh, uh, answer uh, to Aditya Dopatkar, sir, can uh, reply to that also, right? Or we will go for uh, Mohitesa's question. Uh, actually, once upon a time, it was a very good, uh, you know, yeah. for the in the plantation program. Mm. You yeah. rightly said about the social forestry. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, the barren lands, they get uh, green and uh, nitrogen fixing, another thing. Uh, the copices are there. So it's a very good fuel wood mm. for the local people. So the greenery, fuel wood, and uh, the, you know, uh, People use it in a various ways. Mm. Um, only the thing, uh, when uh, they are encroaching the um, natives, then it is invasive. So, mm. uh, actually, if so, they so, are, so according they, to me, I would say I wouldn't consider that as an invasive species. Correct, so, correct, correct, yeah. sir. Rightly said, <laughs> rightly said, yeah. rightly said. In fact, it is not fully invasive, but it tends to grow rather yeah. than stopping other trees from growing. Right. It grows so fast that becomes difficult to control. It does not yes. stay disciplined in its place. Right. That is the meaning of what I meant by invasive. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So what control, control, controlling what we is, read, what we read is it doesn't allow any other plant to grow. And it becomes a monoculture also. Yes, yes. yes sir. Hello, we... Namaste, Namaste, Shinde, sir. Namaskar, sir. Bula. Namaskar. Uh, my question is in all nurseries, uh, mm -hmm. commonly all these energy species are sold. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> even a variety of antennas and all. How we will manage this? Nursery like inspection, quarantine, control. I take the qualified na yet barizana. They could nahi sagrikadna asha species uh punate uri kanchan, majority motan nursery ahead. Ta nursery madhimi bagitla, there's a very common asterisk member even cosmos is sold. Variety of cosmos, pink, yellow. Ani barasha species jahit, lantern as a variety ahead. आपण एवढं सगळं सांगतोय की एक त्यांना एक काहीतरी असं आपल्या बॉटनीच्या लोकांनी हे इन्व्हेजिव आहे प्लांटचं नाव आणि त्याचा फोटो असा एक नर्सरीला त्यांना एक चार्ट तयार करून देऊन की बाबा इन्व्हेजिव स्पेसीज आर नॉट सोल्ड हिअर असं काहीतरी त्यांना ते नर्सरीवर एक बॅन आणला पाहिजे कारण का ते महत्वाचं स्प्रेडिंग एजंट आहे तिथं सर आय अवेअरनेस प्रोग्राम इज अ ओनली सोल्युशन टू दिस of course, you can't stop them making money uh, by selling this because cancha to pota paane is a question. Nah, hey, but, but uh, me, 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 me
तुम्ही म्हणता तसं गव्हर्नमेंटची हेल्प घेऊन आपल्याला त्याच्यावर काहीतरी बॅन आणता येईल किंवा नाही त्यांच्यावर नर्सरीवर कोणाचाच कंट्रोल नाहीये कुठलं कुठलं एजन्सी त्याच्यावर कंट्रोल करू शकते असा विचार तुम्ही त्यांच्यावर कंट्रोल त्यांच्यावर शॉप ऍक्ट काय आहे का किंवा आपण त्यांना काय सांगू शकतो का की बाबा लँटिनाच्या व्हरायटी तुम्ही सेल आउट करू नका किंवा बऱ्याचशा व्हरायटी गॅलान सुगा इवन आस्कल पियास काय वाटेल ते त्या आमच्या इथल्या नर्सरीमध्ये आहे सो असे आपल्या ह्या ज्या एजन्सीज आहेत जसं वृक्ष महाराष्ट्र वृक्ष संवर्धिनी किंवा अशा ज्या एजन्सीज सगळीकडे सगळीकडे आहेत सगळ्या सातारला अगदी बरोबर या आपणच लोकांनी मला वाटतं अवेअरनेस प्रोग्राम घ्यायला पाहिजे आणि लोकांना सांगायला पाहिजे दोन पद्धतीने एक तर गव्हर्नमेंटची मदत घेऊन त्यांच्यावर बॅन आणून त्यांना विकण्यापासून प्रवृत्त करणं आणि न विकण्यापासून प्रवृत्त करणं आणि आपल्यासारखे जे लोक विकत घेतात त्यांना हे सांगितलं पाहिजे की तुम्ही किती यू आर बिकमिंग अ रिझन टू स्प्रेड दिस काइंड ऑफ स्पीशीज सो वी कुड स्टॉप कारण का हा स्प्रेडिंग जे आहे ते एक्झॉटिक पर्टिक्युलर जी इन्व्हेजिव्ह स्पीसीज स्प्रेडिंग आहे ते अर्बन टू रुरल एस्केप होत जाते ते बरोबर आणि तिथं खरा प्रॉब्लेम येतोय की शहराच्या कडे ना आता आम्ही बघतोय ते पुण्याकडनं जी लोक आमच्याकडे कासला वगैरे इकडे बांधलेले येतात ते सगळं ते कॉस्मॉस सीड गोळा करून योतेश्वरच्या घाटात टाकलंय त्यांनी कि हे छान दिसतंय आणि रोड साईडला चांगलं दिसेल अशा पद्धतीनं ते आणि कॉस्मॉसच्या पिंक व्हरायटी वगैरे दुसऱ्या व्हरायटी ज्या आहेत त्या इव्हन आमच्या इथं नर्सरीमध्ये सेल आउट करायला आहेत मग मी आता काय करू हे तुमच्याकडे जो एक चार्ट तुम्ही जो दिलेला आहे कमीत कमी त्याचा एक फोटोग्राफ आणि त्याचा एक बॉटनिकल नेम कि नेम कि बाबा ह्या तुम्ही सेल करू नका अशा मेजॉरिटी ज्या नर्सरी आहेत त्या पुणे टू उरळी कांचन ज्या आहेत ह्याच्यामध्ये पुण्याला त्यांना ते बोर्ड दिले पाहिजेत किंवा त्यांना ते चार्ट दिला पाहिजे की फोटोग्राफ्स देऊन हे तुम्ही सोल करू करू नका हे वृक्षमित्र आपले जे वृक्ष संवर्धनी जे आहे त्यांनी ते खरं म्हणजे करायला पाहिजे आम्ही सातारमध्ये करतोच बर्वे बोलतोय बोलू का येस सर हॅलो येस सर बोला हा माझ्या मते हे जे डेकोरेटिव्ह लँडाना आहेत ते इन्व्हेजिव्ह नाही आहेत तो जो आपला ट्रेडिशनल लँडाना आहे तोच इन्व्हेजिव्ह आहे गिरीपुष्प सुद्धा इन्व्हेजिव्ह नाही आहे हा आपोआप काही होत नाही ते तुम्हाला करावेच लागतात त्यामुळे हे दोन स्विसीज वरती थोड कन्फ्युजन मला वाटलं की डेकोरेटिव्ह लँडाना इज नॉट इन्व्हेजिव्ह मी कुठेही जंगलामध्ये ते वेगळ्या रंगाचे लँडाना अजून पर्यंत तर बघितले नाही आहेत दे आर नॉट इन्व्हेसिव्ह एस्केप म्हणून कुठेतरी ते येतात इस्पेशली रोड डिवायडर्स आणि ह्याच्यावर जेव्हा ती लावली जातात त्यावेळेला ती एस्केप होऊन कुठेतरी वाढत जातात नाही वाढत कुठेही कुठेही वाढलेले मी अजून पर्यंत पाहिलेलं नाही आहे मी खूप भटकतो ओके थँक्यू सर रंग लँडाना मी कुठेही दुसऱ्या रंगाचा हे जो झालेला बघितलेला नाही आहे आणि तसंच गिरीपुष्प सुद्धा कुठेही वाटेल तिथे वाढत नाही येस सर वी विल टेक अ नोट आणखीन एक इथे प्रश्न आहे सर विनया जोशी यांनी विचारलाय इकॉनिया कॅन बी युज इन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ बायोगॅस इज इट अ ट्रू अँड प्रॅक्टिकल ट्रू इन द सेन्स देर इज वर्क गोईंग ऑन लॉट ऑफ रिसर्च ऑन दॅट पर्टिक्युलर प्लान आणि वेअर वी आर देर इज अ शॉर्टेज ऑफ फ्युएल इन एनी वे सो इफ इट इज गुड वी कॅन यूज इट द इफेक्ट ऑफ युजिंग सच गॅस नीड्स टू बी स्टडीड सो वी हॅव नो आयडिया हाऊ बॅड ऑर गुड इट इज बट दर इज वर्क गोईंग ऑन ऑन दॅट पर्टिक्युलर एरिया बाकी सर एव्हरीबडी इज टेलिंग दॅट द लेक्चर वॉज व्हेरी इन्फॉर्मेटिव्ह अँड व्हेरी युजफुल हा नमस्कार सर मी पल्लवी घरपुरे बोलतीये बोला मॅम सर तुम्ही जे सांगितलं तुमच्या शाळेतली एक गोष्ट ते मी ऐकलं पार्थिनियम काढत होता काँग्रेस तर मला असं सर विचारायचं होतं की मेकॅनिकल विडिंग तुम्ही जे त्याचा पर्याय सांगितलात 
केमिकल किंवा हे वापरायच्या ऐवजी पण त्याचे नंतर विल्हेवाट कशी लावत होतात म्हणजे तो ढीक साठला कोपऱ्यात आपण गोळा केला काही नाही लोक ते वाढवायचे आणि नंतर त्याला आग लावून हे करायचे की आय एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इन सेव्हन्टी फाईव्ह सेव्हन्टी सिक्स नाईन्टी त्या वेळेची गोष्ट आहे सो ते जाळायचे चक्क त्याला अच्छा वाढलं ना एकदा वाढल्यानंतर ते जाऊन टाकायचं अच्छा पण तोपर्यंत त्याचे सड सीड प्रोप्युल त्याच्या जमिनीमध्ये हे होत नसतील का पुढे परत होत होत असणार वाढलेल्या सीड असतील त्या मॅच्युअर्ड सो ते जे वर्क अनुभव वर्क एक्सपिरियन्स जो तास असायचा तो चार महिने चालायचा ना जवळजवळ पूर्ण विंटर दर शनिवारी नवीन आलेला परत कारण हो कारण ह्यांचं सर प्रोपोगेशन एअर डिस्पर्सल नि होत ह्यांचं रिप्रोडक्शन फास्ट असत सो कॉस्मॉस पण तसंच करत त्याच्यामुळे मी इरॅडिकेशन प्रॉब्लेम ह्याच्यामध्ये एक प्रोग्राम मध्ये भाग घेतला होता डॉक्टर सचिन पुणेकर सरांनी तो आयोजित केला होता पण आपण जो ढीग रस्तो ते प्रोप्युगल्स तिथे परत हे होत असतील ना नवीन तयार करत असतील रोप पुढच्या वर्षी किंवा फेवरेबल कंडिशन आल्यानंतर असं सो त्यांना जाळून टाकणं हेच त्याचा एक म्हणजे त्याच्यातला उपाय किंवा आपण असं म्हणता येईल हो ना ओके सर थँक्यू सर खरंच मला डाऊट आहे सर येस सर की आता बऱ्यापैकी काँग्रेस आपोआप कमी झालेला आहे भागामध्ये एक फुलका नावाचं एक वेगळं वीड आलेलं आहे त्याला काटे आहेत ते कोळा असताना जनावर खातात पण एकदा काटे सुरू झाले की ते काही खात नाहीत असं ते पसरतं जमिनीवरती आणि पांढरे पांढरे असे फुलं असतात आणि त्याला काट्याची गुच्छ येतात त्याला आमच्याकडे फुलका म्हटलेला आहे तर काँग्रेस बऱ्यापैकी नाहीसं झालंय म्हटलं तरी चालेल आमच्याकडे पण हे नवीन वीड आलेलं आहे फुलका नावाचं आय अग्री आय अग्री विथ यू सर हे म्हणजे काँग्रेसच दिसण कमी होत चाललंय आणि व्हॉट यू सी इज युपेटोरियम मिकानिया युपेटोरियम हे सगळीकडे वाढायला लागले किंवा वाढलंय ऑलरेडी व्हॉट यू सेंग इज राईट आणि जिथे जिथे मला कॅशिया टोरा वाढलेला दिसतो एक वेगळ्या प्रकारचा तिथे त्या काँग्रेस अजिबात वाढत नाही ऍक्च्युली तो कॅशा युनिफ्लोरा आहे जिथे काँग्रेसला त्याने रिप्लेस केलाय आणि व्हॉट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट फुलका इज अल्टर नॉन तेरा टनेला ओके इट्स अल्टर नॉन तेरा टनेला एक इथे आणखीन एक क्वेश्चन आहे व्हॉट आर दॉट्स ऑन पीजिन्स हो आपला खरं विषय नाहीये आत्ताचा पण एक इथे एक छोटा प्रश्न कसाही आहे पीजिन्स करता प्रश्न आहे बट दॅट इज नॉट अवर टुडेज ओके असं मला विचारायचंय की तुम्ही जेव्हा प्रिव्हेन्शन मेजर सांगितलात ना त्यावेळेला क्वारंटाईन आणि इन्स्पेक्शन फॅसिलिटीज वडाळ्याला आहेत त्याबद्दल थोडस इलॅबोरेट करा ना म्हणजे कशा तऱ्हेने केलं जात वनस्पतींचं सी एस आय आर लॅब आहे मोठी मॅडम आणि इम्पोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट जे करतात म्हणजे पोर्ट मधून जेव्हा एखादी कन्साइनमेंट येते तर त्याच सॅम्पल ते बाजूला काढतात आणि ते क्वारंटाईन लॅबला चेक करायला पाठवतात आणि तिथे थरली त्याचं चेकिंग करतात ते मायक्रोबियल इन्फेक्शन किंवा एनी काइंड ऑफ इन्सेक्ट ऑन दॅट त्याचं मायक्रोस्कोपिक चेकिंग होत आणि जर त्यांना वाटलं की हे याच्यामध्ये इन्फेक्शन आहे तर ती कन्साइनमेंट ती नाकारली जाते आणि परत पाठवली जाते खूप सुंदर लॅब आहे ती आणि फॅसिलिटीज आहेत स्टाफ आहे त्यांच्याकडे पण अशा ठिकाणी की कोणाला माहिती नाही की तिथे ती क्वारंटाईन लॅब आहे ती मुंबई विद्यापीठाने क्वारंटाईन हा विषय सिलेबस मध्ये जेव्हा टाकला तेव्हा ती आम्ही शोधून काढली आणि मग आम्ही मुलांना तिकडे घेऊन जायला लागलो सो दर वर्षी आमची मुलं बऱ्याच कॉलेजची मुलं जात असतील आता तिकडे आणि त्यांच्याच त्यांची एक ब्रांच हे पण आहे की आपले हे जे हापूस आंबे एक्सपोर्ट करतात सो एपीएमसी मध्ये त्यांचं एक ऑफिस आहे तिथे जाणाऱ्या कन्साइनमेंट चेक होतात सो त्याचं सगळी म्हणजे हे जे क्वारंटाईन डिपार्टमेंट आहे इट्स अ टॉपिक इट्स सेल्फ फॉर अ लेक्चर अच्छा पण खूप खूप सुरेख 
त्यांची व्यवस्था आहे त्याच्यामध्ये आपल्याला माहिती नाही एवढं ते काम करतात माझ्याकडे ब्लॅटर हर्बेरियमला ते दोन तीन वेळा त्यांनी माझी हेल्प घेतलेली आणि कधी कधी लोक चिटिंग करण्याचा प्रयत्न करतात हे ऑर्नमेंटल प्लांट परक्या देशातून आपल्याकडे जेव्हा आणतात तेव्हा ते जर बॅन केलेलं असेल त्या लिस्ट मधलं असेल तर गव्हर्नमेंटला चीट करण्यासाठी त्याचं नाव काहीतरी वेगळं सांगितलं जात <laughs> आणि मग ते आमच्याकडे येऊन त्याचं आयडेंटिफिकेशन आम्हाला विचारतात की हे नक्की काय आहे हे आहे की हे आहे म्हणजे बँड असेल तर मग दॅट कन्साइनमेंट इज रिजेक्टेड अँड सेंड बॅक म्हणजे हे सगळं जिथे जिथे आपले एंट्री पॉइंट आहेत सगळं मागवून म्हणजे तिथलं सगळे म्हणजे आता सी शोअर असू दे एअरपोर्ट असू दे किंवा जिथन जिथन पॉइंट आहेत एंट्री पॉइंट तिथली सगळी सॅम्पल्स येऊन त्या इथे वडाळ्याच्या लॅब मध्ये टेस्ट केली जातात का हो हो ओके दोन गोष्टी सांगायच्या होत्या ते गिरी पुष्पच जे बोललं गेलं ते गिरी पुष्पाच्या रूट काय दे आर पॉइनस टू रॅट्स आणि सेकंडली ते जेव्हा आणलं तेव्हा त्याच्या इट इज अ डेसिटिव्ह स्पेसिज आणि त्यांची पानगळ खाली झाल्यानंतर दे हॅव अ गुड अमाऊंट ऑफ वॉटर सो दे वर्क आफ्टर डिकम्पोजिशन दे वर्क एज अ ग्रीन मॅन्युअर टू एनरिच द सॉइल दॅट वॉज द मेन पर्पज to mm-hmm. bring that particular plant to our country mm-hmm. on uh, uh, de- degraded lands mm-hmm. secondly atta je mr barve manale which is very true apan je species bagto lantana cha garden mai it is lantana kamara mm-hmm. there there is the one which is growing in the wild is lantana kamara variety aculeata mm-hmm. where there we have only one color orange and uh yellow and there are no different colors of flowers are there similarly this chromolina it was brought as a horticultural plant as a uh, um eupatorian triply nervis mm. so that's it is on hybridization hala hai ki kay hala in the vegra form madhe ala hai echa badal abhyas wala pahije karan he ॲज इट इज क्रोमोलिना ओडोराटा काय आपल्याकडे आणलं नव्हतं आय थिंक हे बघायला पाहिजे जर थोडस पण थँक्यू व्हेरी मच व्हेरी नाईस थँक्यू सर थँक्यू गुड थँक्यू माणिक थँक्यू थँक्यू लट्टू सर लट्टू सर लट्टू सर लट्टू सर हे मुंबईकरांचे वर्तक सर आहेत हो येस 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 नाही नाही आम्हाला सुद्धा काही लागलं तर आम्ही लट्टू सरांच्याकडे जाऊ वर का नक्कीच नक्की नक्कीच अजून कोणाला काही विचारायचं असेल तर विचारा नाही तर आपण थांबूया डायरेक्ट विचारा अनम्यूट होऊन किंवा माहिती कितक वेगळी माहिती द्यायची असलं तरी हरकत नाही हो चालेल ना हा शोनील भागवत त्याला काही सांगायचं आहे का हो महाजन सर पण जॉईन झाले होते शोनील भागवत सर पण मला असं वाटतं महाजन सर आता दिसत मग अशी होते एम के मिस्त्री म्हणजे माणिक मिस्त्री जॉईन झालेत का हो हो अरे आफ्टर लॉंग टाइम मी सर गुड इव्हनिंग सर येस हा हे कार्तिक बोलताय बोला 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 येस येस कार्तिक फ्रॉम कर्नाटका सर येस सर सर आय हॅव अ स्मॉल क्वेश्चन हियर हियर इन प्रिव्हियस इन प्रिव्हियस सेशन मिस्टर वसंत बर्वे सर टोल्ड दॅट दॅट द हायब्रिड लांटाना इज नॉट इन्वेसिव्ह हायब्रिड लांटाना लांटाना दॅट आर सोल्ड इन Um, nurseries and all they are not invasive so can we plant those lantana and cosmos for uh, butterfly in butterfly gardens as nectar uh, nectar plants is it good or bad can you please explore that point so there is there are two opinions na? as you require more studies on this uh, 
as far as Barve okay. is said that these species, the, the ornamental ones are not invasive. And if they are not invasive, if this is established fact, then there is no harm in planting them as in the butterfly garden. Because I'm sure they are, a uh, lot of birds feed on them. Yeah. So there should be... One more comment on Lantana. Yes, sir. Uh, in Karnataka, they have trained so many people to make furniture out of Lantana. Oh. And it's a very nice furniture. It's quite durable. I've seen that. There's a, there's a training center right in Bangalore. Right, right. FR, FRLHT has established that. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, they okay. have made a very good use of lantana, actually. And uh, uh, the use is for the sustainable mm -hmm. development of local people. Mm -hmm. So, something good coming out of it. Yeah, because cane, cane is vanishing almost. So, this lantana is getting uh, substitute as a cane itself. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shinde sir. Upon who uh, busy schedules Madhun Alat and he Amja the Yamanchavati to me Vakan dealer, Yavadal Kukuk the Nevat, and he Karoka informative lectures Halela. He lecture up the Mission Devra YouTube channel worthy Kayam Upalab Dashnarahe, Jana Konala adds Bahata Alani, Tani Kemahi. यह चैनल ला सब्सक्राइब करा अनि जरूर यह चावर्ती सभी लेक्चर्स अत्ता परिण जीजी का इधाले लिया है ती सभी लेक्चर्स अवेलेबल आहेत कोणाला अभ्यास साथी रिसर्च जा कही विषयन साथी जर का हवियसली तरी सुधा यह यह यूट्यूब चैनल वरुण तुम्हाला बरेच विषय वगैरह वगैरह मिलू शक्ति तर हे ही संगाई आणि अभ्यासकांचे धन्यवाद देते आणि शिंदे सरांनाही धन्यवाद देते आणि असं आता आपण थांबूया यस वर्तक सरांच्या स्मृतीला परत एकदा वंदन करून आज आपण थांबूया थँक यू थँक यू मॅडम आई वुड आल्सो लाइक टू थँक माय स्टूडंट हु इज हियर राजदेव सिंग फॉर गिविंग मी द इन्फॉर्मेशन 